yeah, all right, here you go. So this is the, um, I've already forgotten what the event is, but it's some, some important event um, down to the last eight. And uh, the matchup will be, of course, Might against Kinesi, which is uh, Dutch against Brits on Grand Jackal. Okay. Dutch against Brits on Grand Jackal. Just having a quick look at the map on, on the mini map, but it seems relatively fine, I'd say. Um, perhaps this mine a bit more exposed, but uh, they're both both mines are relatively close to the town, nearby to the town center, and hunts are fairly f fair here, I'd say. So, um, just turning on the fog of war here, and shifting this over to the left, making it recalculated, and that should be all the preparation done. So, the Kinesi in the south southern half of the map going, uh, playing as British, uh, Maito in the northern half of the map playing as Dutch. Uh, one thing to note is that this map is a livestock map. If we turn off the fog, we can see there's all these livestock things, um, llamas they're called, in the, all these different pockets of the map. So, they've both come across the same treasure over here. Uh, Maito is going to be going for it first. Kinesi has scouted it, but most likely, but looks like he's going to be walking away. Uh, or maybe he'll be coming in right now, but I think he might be a bit too late since Maito is, yes, of course, being careful enough to get very close in there and just grab that before anyone has a chance to steal it. So Might are going to be getting the first food treasure here. Now they're interesting how they're both uh, basically um, moving towards this, the same in the same direction. Now for Maito that might be on purpose, uh, basically just trying to uh, check out um, where Kinesi's uh, explorer is, um, is, is heading on, trying maybe trying to steal some treasure. And I wasn't actually paying attention to where this on what this envoy was doing, but if you look at uh, what's been scouted so far, you can see that it doesn't really seem like uh, much was scouted by the Dutch player so far, right? um, despite the fact that he did start with an envoy. So I'm suspecting that he actually left that envoy a bit idle for a while there, but I can't be 100% sure. Can you see going for this uh, food, food, uh, sorry, coin treasure over here? Might have just coming in here and trying to get a bit uh, of HP off of the explorer and possibly steal it. Of course, the coin treasure is very good for Dutch if he can get it, so I'll just see who gets this. I think Maito was faster, uh, nope, apparently not, and Kinesi was faster, but he does have, a, it, does, that mean, it does mean that he will be um, losing this um, explorer battle if he is to fight. Um, second, sorry. Now my uh, background noise might be increasing a bit, but um, not much I can do about that. So, brief interlude, let's brief recap, uh, Dutch against um, Ritz. Now, this matchup is a bit... Um, it's a bit hard to call, I'd say. Um, traditionally, I think the, the the main school of thought is that um, it's Brit favored, right? But this is EP, and Dutch has been kind of um, buffed slightly, whereas uh, Brits have been um, nerfed slightly. So the cu the Are current um, buff to Dutch yes. uh, from from regular uh, RE patch Dutch is that um, basically it's just that uh, you have one extra bank build limit and um, I believe you get more XP upon building the bank. Right now, with the current EP iteration, um, banks do cost uh, 350 wood, 350 food. Uh, in the past, they've experimented with changing the cost, but right now, it's just an XP boost per bank. Um, looks like uh, Maito just trying his best to just deny how, how this um, uh, explorer from just exploring as freely as he wants. But he doesn't want to get too close, because if you look at how the um, the uh, HP's, uh, HP bars are like, um, there's still the possibility that uh, Blue can pop in some villages in the town center and and basically chase Teal off. You can see, look, uh, Maito hasn't been very on top of how his envoy has been moving throughout the game. He had a bit of idle time over there, and usually Dutch by this time in the game, if he was on top of things, he'd probably be, have scout, rather, I mean, we can't actually tell who scouted what, but I would have expected um, Dutch to have scouted pretty much all of the map by now. Uh, probably a uh, side effect of how he was uh, trying so hard to um, uh, coral in the uh, blue explorer, so to speak. It's interesting to note how this envoy is also going to contribute to its doing that. But this 100 XP treasure is going to be pretty nice for Maito. He has aged up with 15 or 20 villagers, which is the standard. But this 100 XP treasure does guarantee that he will get, he will have a shipment upon aging up. Now, Maida, of course, doing what the standard Dutch uh, thing in transition is, which is to basically um, gather enough food and wood to get a bank. 
Where's Kinesi? Well, let's have a look at his villagers. Everything's on wood. Um, I don't think he's got... He's got gangsaw and hunting dogs. So... Yeah, but he hasn't actually... Alright, so here comes his first house. Over here. and Well, his second house, actually. So, kind of... Um, quite, quite spread out. So... Uh, which is kind of standard for uh, players. In, um, you basically just kind of spread out your manor houses, uh, get line of sight, see or anything that's coming. And Maito is going to age out being the Dutch player. And I don't know if he's going to drop a military building or if he's going to go for uh, what's known as a five bank rush, in which you just make five banks and. Well, of course, there's a bit of misnomer, but anyway. Um, Let's have a look at the shipment sent now. So now it's the time of the game when the shipment sent are going to be a bit more, a bit more of uh, importance. And then the hundred food pickup there are going to be very nice for, for Maito if he does want to get his next bank up. Um, no military, no military buildings for either, either player just yet. Can you see taking up a nice um, scout treasure, which is going to help him with exploring the map. And the thing, between, the difference between this and the envoy is that you can actually scout your opponent without them actually knowing that you've scouted them. Uh, of course, that being due to the stealth ability. 700 wood coming in for my turn, and I do expect um, that that is going to go <laughs> into uh, more banks. Um, well, <laughs> I find this uh, extremely amusing, um, this bank location, but it's not an, an, an entirely unheard of. But he will be in danger if uh, Kinesi decides to go for the uh, famous uh, 50 pike. Never mind, um, 50 pike rush or something. Because this is actually very exposed. And one thing about your economic unit, uh, economic uh, facilities, is, uh, facilities like banks and stuff like that, is that you normally want them to be in range of towns and fire. But there's nothing wrong actually with doing this because the, these are actually 4,000 uh, 4, HP buildings, which means they take a very long time to siege down. And you can see that Kinesi is going for um, a five hustler. Um, well, uh, starting with a stable, basically. Mm, he might get one villager over here. In fact, it, it seems quite likely he's going to, given that the scout is coming in here. And Maito needs to move his villager, especially, well, especially now that he sees that the scout is here. But, of course, he doesn't necessarily know what's, co what's on the way, but I think that, well, it's a bit too late for him to move that villager right now. That villager is probably going to die. Uh, Bankwagon, he's using an interesting trick over here. Now, I'll explain that later on, but let's just have a look at this villager dying. So here comes the first kill of the day. Um, one villager dying, and uh, these banks going to go up. Right. Now, the little trick over there was something um, discovered uh, maybe a few years ago by yours truly, in which um, bank wagons can actually build bank foundations. So you do, you do not actually need a villager on that to um, get it up. Um, Ooh, there's actually a lot going on, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to just keep uh, stray away from that subject for a moment. You can see how quite nicely actually Maito's killed a lot of uh, these guacanos around his town center, so he will be able to pop up villagers in and out to just keep gathering food. Have a look at the, at the villager HP. So right now all he's done so far is uh, lost, uh, I, mean he, I mean he's only lost one villager so far. And all the villagers nicely in the town center, in and out. Uh, can you see just continuing to build the uh, houses here, spreading out his houses a bit more over there. And just Hassar is still dying, but not killing any villagers so far. Let's just double check that though. Uh, units lost. One villager lost. Eight pikemen going to do very, is a very nice pop for eight pikemen. I, uh, pop, a unit pop, uh, great unit pop selector or something that I do respect. And uh, you can see six Hassars lost and only one villager lost for, for the Dutch player. So so far, quite a big win for Maito thus far. Um, I mean, he did he did uh, ship a um, he did have to ship eight pikemen to defend off, but I don't think that's really very much a big loss. I mean, while he did have all his villages idled in town center, he did still have four banks working for him at the same time. I can see kind of how that has ended turned out. I mean, Kinesi did. Uh, commit to making all these hussars, but in the end they didn't achieve very much except for that one uh, solo villager over here on the left uh, foolishly still hunting on that mine even after being scouted sorry, still hunting on that uh, gua guanaco even after being scouted uh, but Kinesi is actually going to be going for a semi-FF here so not exactly going for the full British boom but uh, just slowly making his way up and um, but the thing to note here is that um, 
Well, I mean, he, he's he, he, those those eight hustlers haven't actually achieved much. Of course, he's going to be used, he's using the remaining three hustlers to uh, do a bit of uh, treasure gathering. But um, because Dutch does have the fast age up politician, he's actually going to age up much faster than the British player over here, and uh, with more of an eco behind it. And we also have to note that Dutch, how Dutch works is that they don't actually need as much map control compared to British. For example, I mean, Brits use, a, they consume a lot of hunts, whereas the Dutch, they've got these banks which are an infinite source of uh, re coin. So, in the end, um, look, I mean, the Dutch player has aged up a lot faster than the British player, despite the British player picking up uh, faster. And the Dutch player is actually going to be free to build up his infrastructure over here with the 600 wood that she, which he did ship. And now he's getting the placement mines upgrade as well. He's getting in all these uh, market upgrades. And these uh, villagers on wood are probably just to uh, just get that pop space so you can start um, spamming units. And let's see what's in queue here. Of course, Kenny's getting the um, second tier uh, wood upgrade there. So it looks like um, his plan was just to uh, spam houses in transition uh, while just getting barracks and theft, stuff like that. Uh, Maito going to be taking initiative here. You can see that he does have more more of a military unit population at this point in time. But seven, I do believe seven. Yep, seven longbowmen have popped. Uh, he can't actually push in too far. But what he can do, yep, what he's doing right now is just getting the XP. Now I know um, at lower levels people often get told, don't siege down British houses. But it's actually not that bad. You get quite a bit of uh, XP from doing so, especially if it's in an exposed location like that. Now, uh, can you see just uh, got two? He's got two backs and one stable, but he does have a considerably uh, worse economy compared to the Dutch player. Um, however, things are still still it's still hard to call. I mean, uh, traditionally, longbowmen and something to protect the longbowmen has been something that Dutch does struggle against. Uh, well, Dutch does also struggle against falconets, but um, I mean. We've got six skirmishers and one crossman in queue versus what uh, versus what appears to be a longbowman dragoon composition coming from our British player over here. Uh, both players just uh, being a bit cautious here. Uh, Maito being cautious and going for the extremely uh, economic, um, extremely economic uh, slow slow choice here, which is uh, shipping 1,000 wood. Uh, right after his hitting H3, basically, as soon as he could after hitting H3, because of course you remember that he did send 600 wood in H2, which means he did not have a shipment uh, that early on in H3. But uh, l this 1000 wood is probably the right decision here, given how um, Kinesi is being a bit um, scared to push out, and um, possibly rightly so. He doesn't know what is what is out there for him, and I'm not sure where his native scout is. Uh, it might have died. Uh, if that, of course, if that was still alive, then he'd have a much better idea of what was going on. Um, but what is going on is actually two stables and two barracks coming up from Maito, and he's hard to stop gathering wood. Of course, wood being the slowest gathering resources, uh, slowest gathering resource in Age of Empires 3. Um, yep. Uh, so it's going to just going to be a skirmisher Roy to most likely versus longbowman uh, dragoon. And uh, can you see actually catching up slightly with regards to the economic economic unit population here? Uh, and that is to do with how he's been steadily gathering manor houses as time goes on, as he messes up units uh, at the same time. And it looks like Maito is trying to go for a Husser switch. And uh, that, of course, could be bad for Kinesi. Um, Kinesi is also going for 1,000 wood over here, but it's uh, difficult to see what that's going to go into. He may be a bit bismackered for this. So you can see there's 14 villages on food and, and 21 on wood. But... Uh, What's, 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 what, what he's really got going well for him is how all these manor houses have been spread out in pretty nice locations, giving him line of sight of anything which is going in, going to pass through these key locations. He's also going to use that 1000 wood to fill the town center, and of course town centers do only cost 500 wood on EP, so in, I mean, indirectly he saved 100 wood through this build order. And uh, I like this town center location, honestly. Um, it's uh, it's uh, it, well, for, first of all, it's in a kind of a semi-choke over here, uh, which means that it will be rather easily defendable comparatively. Uh, of course, compared to something in the, mid in the middle of the map, which uh, most players won't do. But it, is it does uh, control trees, mine, and hunts here. So, well, of course, because Maito is the, the Dutch player, he does not necessarily um, need 
all of this just yet because of how these banks were. But he is going to have to push out for a bit of food later on. And going to have to see where his villages go. Let's have a look at uh, the military unit population though, because that that's going to be a uh, quite an important factor here. Um, Maito is ahead by about 19 military unit population, whereas uh, well. And you can see that he's, he's also ships 1,000 wood, most likely do a double hustler switch from those two um, stables. And you look what's in queue here. You might be waiting for another batch of hustlers there. This is most likely two hustlers from here and two hustlers from there. But here's Popcat. And I don't know if he's fixing that. Uh, here comes the house, so he will be able to get uh, a few more in queue perhaps. And okay, this here comes a big fight actually. So we're going to watch this for a while. And uh, Maito being... Uh, bit uh, unprepared over there, but he still does have the surprise of, uh, surprise here. He, I mean, that's a lot of Hussar, and that's only about 15 Dragoons, so yeah. But the Falcon S here doing pretty good work. Okay, everything just jamming in. Um, but honestly, actually, I think that was that was uh, not as good an engage for Mito as you could have hoped, although it does seem like he's still going to be winning this fight. Um, but the Falcon in the back is still shooting away, and uh, looks like the Reuters are going to be trying to focus it down. But decisively actually winning the fight over here might do is um, all those Dragoons and Longbowmen not being quite enough to counter this uh, Hustle switch. Um, I think there must have been at least 20 of them. And look, uh, can you see he's going to call GG? So perhaps um, can you see being a bit too um, rather not not knowing 100% what his opponent was doing just yet I uh, could probably have uh, scouted a bit a bit better with his uh, explorer or something but yeah um, 1 0 to Maito uh, I'm not sure what uh, best of thing this is but uh, I'll, check, I'll check that later on and uh, we'll go on to game number 2 one quick look at the uh, the graphs here, the villager population. Can you see not going for the usual um, villager spike that it does in H2? Instead, going for more gradual boom here. And just opting to build manor houses over time with his uh, second tier wood upgrade. We can see, yeah, I think that was just the uh, more unit principle, more, more stuff principle uh, coming into play there. Plus the fact that uh, longbowmen aren't exactly a unit used for pushing in, they're more of a unit used for de defensive battles. I mean, they did work for a while then in the battle there, but eventually, all, you know, once the hustlers got into the range, uh, got into uh, close combat with the longbowmen, there wasn't really much that uh, Kinesi could do to retreat and uh, minimize losses. I do believe I forgot to look at the decks though, so that's that's my my bad. But uh, we'll have a look at the decks right now, just for um, just for completion, just for yeah. So this was Maito's deck, and uh, it's a bit late, but this was Kinesi's deck. Both pretty standard, so not much to say about that. Okay. Going into game number two here. Okay, so now I just need to figure out what the rules are here are supposed to be. I'm sure they'll know better than me, but uh, I'm going to check anyway. Um, okay, so East Sock. So apparently these are the East Sock Grand Tour Season 1 playoffs. Um, big culmination of a pretty long event. And... Um, So this is a best of five. So apparently, every single time it seems that they start off with the same map pool, but with through all these vetoes, they actually decide what the next map is going to be. And I, I think it's something like uh, winner picks first or something. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure though. Let's see. Uh, winner. Okay. I'll read out the map and civilization rules over here. So map and civilization rules. For game one, veto players will veto maps in alternating fashion until just one map remains. The higher seed player will initiate the vetoing. The last map remaining will be the map played upon for game one. 
After game 1, the winner of the previous match will ban a single map from the map pool, or two maps if it is the grand finals. So this is not the grand finals, so this will be a single map. The loser of the previous map will then the loser of the previous match will then select a map from the remaining pool to be played, and the winner will lock his civilization. The loser will then choose his civilization, and the next game will commence. So that's what's going on here, and what's also going on here is that um, uh, player two has, uh, well, I mean, well, okay, I'll just talk about colors here. Uh, my two is teal, player two is red, and I am blue. Let's just keep it at that for now. Uh, okay. Just have to look at all these map rules here. And apparently there will be no civilization resets during a series. Also after you've used the civilization, it may not be used again. So does that mean Alaska has been banned? Um Uh, my apologies because I'm not exactly uh, let me just uh, double check here Okay. Okay. A bit of the uh, problem in the policy wording I'd see over there. Not policy wording, but uh, tournament rule wording. So we are back, we are back facility. So Mike is going to go um, uh, do some very important business, no doubt. And. Um, I'll leave the map picking to them because we're not, not entirely familiar. Uh, if player two is to be trusted, uh, we will. They will be playing on Hudson Bay. But uh, yeah, I mean, still up in the air as to what's actually going to happen here because I'm not well. Let's have a think about what could have been though in last game. Because you do see that there are two PM on that map. Um, hmm. Ah, nah, never mind. Nobody's going to make those. Really? Our uh, players do, uh, still uh, playing as red. I do believe uh, might have just uh, pick us here first. I'll oh, just wait over here for a while. Um, I did not have enough time beforehand to um, install the overlay. My apologies for that. Uh, it was kind of uh, sudden. But uh, it looks like it will be um, looks like the map will be South Hudson Bay, and Maito is likely going to have to choose a civilization first. Of course, neither neither from what I understand, neither player can play any civilization which has already been played by them. So, a Dutch is banned from Maito, a British banned from Kinesi, and Maito are going to be going for um, France here. And let's see what Kinesi does. Um, he's still thinking. Is the red player over here? I 
thinking very hard. He might be just be uh, looking at his home cities at the moment. That might explain things. Uh, looks like it will be ports, and maybe that was to be expected given how this is a water map. Mm -hmm. Okay. So assuming all is well, I will be greening up, and by doing so, um, pressuring them into greening up as well. The matchup will be um, France against Ports and Hudson Bay, and uh, this may be a bit of uh, community sturdy, but do remember that this is a only a 25% order map, as you can see from the um, thumbnail over here. Um, I think Indonesia excels a lot better on uh, maybe 80% order maps like uh, Indonesia or something. But that does not uh, mean that this is not a map he's uh, unfamiliar with. I mean, he's a water player and he's a waller player. He, he does walls, he does water, and um, I expect to see a lot of that happening in this game. So, yes. Here we go into game number two between uh, Maito and Kinesi for the ESOC um, I believe it's Grand Playoffs or something like that. So Hudson Bay. Mm. This map has two versions so what happens is actu there's actually uh, quite a lot to do with um, which spawn is going to be, whether it's going to be the uh, well now we've seen that it's the kind of uh, sunny spawn compared to the uh, frozen spawn and another thing is to see how the uh, town, how the uh, trading line, um, how the trading line progresses, and it's going to be a um, uh, west-east trading trading line. Um, I can you see picking up a nice forty wood bridge over here? Oh boy. Now I'm I'm a bit worried that this might actually be me, but uh, who knows. Looks like Kinesi is going to check something. Either way, um, let's have a quick look at the hunts. Um, I'd say actually fairly even. Uh, fairly even, perhaps. Uh, Mitos is slightly better, but uh, I don't think that actually that's actually going to make that much of a difference here. Um, nah, it's, I'd, I'd say it's even. Are you ready? I'll, I'll go with this. I'm fine with this. Yes. Um, so the game has been unpaused, and so we do have, have uh, Maito against Knisi. Uh, Knisi playing his ports against Maito playing against France. Um, Knisi going to pick up a 40 wood treasure here, and I'm going to see if he's going to go for a, a market start or anything. Right now that does not seem to be the case, he has not made any attempt to get up his uh, coin treasure which just makes me suspect that he's just going to be going for a house here and yeah, it will be a house um, he could have uh, gathered the 40 coin treasure, gathered the 100 coin treasure built the market and traded the market and still come out uh, kind of the same but with a market but, uh, okay so a bit of another pause here going on Okay, um, if he needs to restart then we will be seeing a restart here, and I do believe that it is most likely allowed for within the rules. Um, in the meantime let's just appreciate um, something on this map. Let's see, there's a, there's a beluga whale. There's not a beluga whale, it's just called a beluga. Um, and apparently in the middle of nowhere. Uh, this is actually uh, Why is there no beluga on the left hand side? Hmm.
Well, you can't have perfect random map spawn, so yeah, we're going to be re restarting anyway, so okay. Looks like in ECS when we we having to restart this computer to fix some issues, and uh, which means that um, this game will be a no count. So out. Anyone who's uh, just tuning in right now, um, this is the. I'm gonna read from the title here: ESLC Grand Tour Season One Playoffs Round of Eight Maito against Kinesi. And uh, uh, well, it's uh, apparently a pretty big event. Uh, as in, it's um, players had to actually qualify to get into the top eight by winning basically. Um, lots of lots of s smaller tournaments, well, lots of mini tournaments, let's say, because they're not necessarily smaller than this uh, limited eight-player free for all. Not free for all, but yeah, you get what I mean. I can see. Looks like he's going to be testing something in game first before he rejoins us. But currently, the score is uh, one zero in favor of Maito. Uh, game one was, of course, uh, Maito playing as a Dutch player, playing as a Dutch against Nisi playing as Brits. We did see that uh, Dutch did eventually uh, prevail, and this is the best of five, I believe. So, uh, still plenty more games to go. And yep, can you see done? Done with his restart. Uh, seems to be okay. Uh, should be all right here. And looks like we will be going for trial number two into uh, game number two, uh, East Rock Hudson Bay. And now we've got the uh, winter spawn. Interesting enough, uh, in the in the first uh, in the first uh, try, uh, we did get the summer spawn or whatever it's called. But uh, looks like it's going to be the um, uh, winter spawn this time around, which means that this this is frozen, and there are no kind of trees or anything here. You can't build a town center next to the coast, so possibly potentially slightly more disadvantages for Kinesi compared to how it was earlier. But is uh, Alright, but we'll stop talking about what happened earlier right now and just focus on what's happening in the present. This is a 200 wood start, which means that, uh, yep, Kinesi does have the option to go for a um, trading post, and he's going to be going for a trading post. And because he did get a 40 wood treasure, uh, he's not going to have to chop as much wood uh, to get his house up. So, so far, slightly more advantages for Kinesi. And um, let's have a look at the Fog of War because. We do have to note that uh, France, of course, uh, does have this extra scout, which he has used to just kind of just sneak around the trading post uh, line, uh, kind of uh, just seeing um, any, any, well, what's around the trading post really, and seeing he will have scouted that Kinesi has decided to take the trading post. Of course, you can also see that in top right, but uh, yeah. 135 XP is very likely what Might is going to be going for here, because I doubt he will expect the uh, Red Explorer to be around, but he is. He might just be seeing if there's anything anything slightly better for him to go for. Of course, he did have to chop his uh, 100 wood himself to get the house up, whereas Kinesi only had to chop for 60 wood because of that wood treasure. And Maido satisfied apparently that there's nothing over here. I'm uh, going to be going straight for the 135 XP, or perhaps just going for the 135 XP because he's got that. The uh, Red Explorer is currently occupied. And uh, just getting one more punch in there before running off. And uh, might so perhaps a bit of a mistake here. Um, potentially, well, possibly he just walked walked too far uh, too far away and the bear HP reset. Of course, Kinesi has not scouted this just yet, but he might, uh, given how his explorer is moving. Uh, we'll see. He will have scouted this, and looks like the uh, line of sight from that will have uh, given him enough line of sight to actually um, basically chain scout um, 
this thing over here. So not looking too good for mine, but uh, still hard, uh, still hard to tell whether um, who's going to get this really. And uh, who will go down first? I think that was Mito, but yep, that was Mito. So he will still get his 135 XP, but it looks like he might be losing Explorer here, which isn't too big of a deal because he does have his native scout just to explore the map. But it does mean that, well, first of all, potentially 45 XP will be going to the red player, as well as the fact that he, uh, red will be free to just uh, build. Um, build, well, build training posts wherever he likes, uh, gather treasures as much as he likes. Not that there's many uh, easily obtainable treasures left on the map, on the southern half of the map at least. But the, of course there's the ADXP and, and this uh, uh, villager stuck in a tree. Not sure how she got there, but yeah, that's how the game works. Uh, Kinesi going to be aging up first with uh, 13 villagers, whereas Maite going for a well, standard uh, France, French uh, 14 villager age up. And time to look at Shimon sent. So, Kinesi did send schooners first, which I think is a bit of an interesting choice. I, th I think um, schooners have, has been slightly buffed on the latest uh, iteration of ESOC patch, if I'm not mistaken. Which means that. Uh, well, let's have a look at the deck actually. So it says uh, fishing boats are cheaper and train faster. So train points minus forty percent, uh, which is quite quite nice, and twenty less wood. And having a look at uh, Mito's deck, a very interesting deck. It seems very FI oriented. Uh, FI of course being a fast industrial. And if you look at the XP totals, um, well, first of all, let's have take a moment to appreciate this wall going up. But um, you can see that both of them, uh, as a result of having these uh, trading posts up so early, um, are going to be already be having shipments. Bef uh, well, two shipments stacked each actually before reaching H2. Pretty nice. You can see spreading out his dock. I don't know if Mito has necessarily scouted this just yet, but likely he will have. Uh, just going here to resurrect his explorer um, before anything. And well, interesting build coming out from Mito here, going for a Cree settlement. Now what the Kree settlement does, if we actually go and um, check that, it's uh, it's got these upgrades which um, reduces the this upgrade reduces, reduces the wood cost of buildings by 25%. Now, now I'm not 100% sure what Mito is actually going to be using that for over here, um, because I mean perhaps as, as if he was playing as a British or something, I would understand. Uh, given how they do sink quite a lot of resources, quite a lot of wood into building all those manor houses. For France, I'm, I'm quite curious to see what it is exactly that that that's, that that's uh, this upgrade is going to be useful for. Um, he is going to be going for a native training post and a stable here, it seems. And uh, can you see just starting to build, well, just continuing to, uh, with his uh, dock I'm um, just going to be going with uh, two docks for now. And uh, 700 wood is going to be always sent next. Of course, be because this is a, um, perhaps because this is a, uh, a um, winter version of the map, not going to be building his town center close to the water, instead going to be deciding to place it closer to the silver mine here. Perhaps slightly exposed outside of the safety of this uh, wall which he's been building. But, uh, that's his choice. Um, might all have scouted this uh, talent center location, as you can see here. And uh, you can see both players actually going having uh, identical ideas, apparently, in with regards to um, trading post plus native trading post. Uh, quite interesting to see there. Um, a rendering plan even coming in for KC, so he is actually committing quite hard to this whole idea of water play. And might not, not uh, deciding just to. Well, it's kind of a semi-FF here, yeah, although it's a semi-FF without four villagers first, so... Hmm. I'd like to see whether he's actually gotten that uh, upgrade. Now he has not gotten the upgrade from the Kree settlement. Okay, so... Slightly confused at the moment as to what the whole purpose of this was for, but most likely it's just to get out those extra villagers. And uh, yeah, that does seem what it's the most logical choice. I mean, the most logical uh, reason for it being here. Of course, um, other than being a native trading post, this, this does allow the training of extra core depot up to 
extra five quarter bar. It's kind of like a temporary town center. It looks like he is going to be using that uh, seven hundred to also grab a bit more of the town center of the um, trading post line. All right, so even even going so far as to get amalgamation. And I mean, I don't I don't know if Kinesi has uh, scouted or or at least looked at Mito's deck, but he should be. <laughs> He should uh, be very well aware of that this really means either an FF or an FI. But it remains to see how successful the FI will be, and whether it, whether it's going to be enough to break this whole uh, fishing boat thing. Because with the FI, Mito might be able to actually do quite a lot on land, but if he can't actually win back water after Kinesi's um, established his whole um, presence with all these... Um, 18 fishing boats so far. You might be in a bit of trouble. And you can already see that beginning, beginning to manifest over here with the very calculated economic population. Um, 36 versus 44. Of course, one thing to note is that um, shipments are also a resource. Experience is also a resource. And Maito has two trading posts compared to Kinesi's one trading post. And he's also starting to siege that down over here. And as you age up, as you progress in age, um, XP becomes more of a valuable resource because of how uh, the value of uh, shipments increases with each age. So approximately 700 in 700 resources in age 2, 1,000 in age 3, and 1,600 in age 4. And well, can you see just continuing to uh, build fishing boats and get all these upgrades? Only now getting gill nets though. And you can see all these upgrades, uh, economic theory as well being there for Kinesi. Let's have a quick look at the shipment sent. It looks like he opted to send uh, economic theory after 700 coin. And 700 coin was being used over here to age up. Now let's see where he ships the town center to. Uh, of course the, he did age up with the exile print, which is the last age up. Both players did do so. And um, it, it looks like it's going to be uh, kind of a defensive town center, which doesn't actually protect any resources, but it's just there in front. Um, it's fine, I guess, but villagers are going to have to walk quite a long distance from me. Anyway, let's have a quick look at uh, all the um, macro that's been going on, because you can see that Maito has hard stopped uh, gathering coin, which means, well, most likely it is going to be a 1,000 coin shipment next, uh, which is going to assist him in going up to the next stage. And um, here comes 1,000 coin, but there are no, well, there are villagers here actually kept together up, so that's fine. So we d I do expect Maito to be aging up relatively soon. I might, of course, using his explorer here, plus these hustlers to kill all the three bears which are guarding this treasure. And then there's going to be one settler, which is a uh, pretty small, but not insignificant, uh, boost to his economy. Uh, the boost which he did get from um, having this uh, trading post will have worn off for now. If you look at uh, all units right now, you can see he's already trained the full, um, full five core de power. So. Now that he's aging up, all villager production will have stopped, whereas for Kinesi, well, 64 and increasing. Now on this map we can see there's, uh, I believe, probably around 4 belugas. Uh, so we will have, um, even after all the food runs out, he will have 16 uh, fishing boats being able to permanently gather on coin. But he's being a bit smart with how he's, he's decided to go about this actually, because you, you can see how he's prioritizing gathering all the coin rather than um, he's, he's tossed his, his fishing boats onto coin first before starting on to um, starting to toss them onto wood and all, and all that really does is uh, basically um, it, it, it preserves I mean it, it increases it, it, how long you can you can sustain your uh, your water boom now Maito the only player with a military unit population as is as is clear clearly indicated over here uh, it's just starting to uh, posture around, around uh, the center of the map. And uh, both players are actually going to age 4, but uh, Maito uh, going to be quite a bit faster. He is pop cap though. And he's going to be aging with the engineer, which gives two falconets. Can you see also uh, taking this Huron settlement, which does give him the uh, 25, I'm sorry, 20%. Yeah, so quite a cheap upgrade, considering that it does give 20% on all all of this fishing body economy, which currently accounts for about, well, almost, uh, well, if, if not half, then maybe one whole third of his economy, so pretty nice. Mito might actually deny it over here. <laughs> uh, 
it's gonna be close though. Oh, it does go up, but it's, uh, I don't know. Yep, this uh, is going to be um, the Huron Fish Wedding does research quite fast, so not going to be too big of a issue for him. And this does also this give Vikings here a lot of time um, to age up. And uh, all this, all all these, uh, this double wall layer is going to keep by him even more time. Um, so might do a bit on a on, on a timer here. He doesn't have a second town center stop. He has gotten his factory out, uh, but uh, no town center up. So he will be behind in economic unit population for quite a while. So he has to make something happen now, and hopefully that momentum will be enough for him to win the game. It's like what his plan is now. You can see uh, villagers moving to the second keep over here, the outer keep right layer rather, and uh, he did actually get the uh, Bastion upgrade which does make these quite strong. And here come two Calvrins, so perhaps anticipating what was going to be coming here, and two Calvrins just nicely finishing off this Falconer in the back here. And that was quite smart as well for him to be targeting the Falconer in the back first, because uh, considering how how um, how uh, the uh, how the system works. I mean, once you've uh, targeted one cal one uh, falconet, the other falconet's going to be running away as fast as it can, well, as fast as falconets can go. And by targeting the falconet, which is furthest away, assuming that both are in range, then there's less of a chance that the second falconet is actually going to be able to run away in time. So that was um, perhaps a bit of a nice micro trick over there by Kinesi. Now. Uh, my two, it is going to be going back to siege down this trading post, which was siege down earlier, and Kinesi did rebuild. But uh, right now we have uh, kind of a battle between uh, military and economic uh, population, and the fish boom is not dying, not dying just yet. Though we can see that it's slowly dying off. We can see not very much food left. Perhaps only about 1,000 food left on all of these fish. Small raid going on, going on over here. So Kinesi's uh, water boom is going to, um, in about maybe two or three minutes, uh, be uh, slightly um, slightly diminished. But that's not going to be the biggest problem because he has also had all these four town centers working for him this whole time. And look at all this ar all this artillery behind walls. Um, and Maito does not actually have anything uh, which can counter this at the moment. He's just going to be seeing this down, but. Um, he is likely going to have to go back, especially once this volley, this volley happens. You have all these units going back and a lot of skirmishers dying already. Not that, not that many actually. I was expecting quite a few more to go. I think he only lost about uh, 4 maximum. Uh, you know, so lost have a look at that. Possibly even less. And 3 skirmishers and... Yeah. So Maito is now aware that this is mostly a um, uh, artillery Dragoon composition. Can you see? You can see how how much better his economy is. Um, look at all that uh, stacking a total of say about uh, well, I mean three thousand resources pretty much. Whereas Maito spending his resources uh, shipping, I d I do believe that um, yeah, that was uh, fourteen skirmishes. So interesting. This. Um, Kind of uh, the kind of style I'd expect from Maito, perhaps to ship 1,600 wood and uh, use that for all his infrastructure. Anyway, it looks like we're going to be having another fight here, and I'm not sure whether Maito really wants to take this. Yeah, he's actually going to be moving back because there are way too many organ guns for him to um, be pushing in over there. Uh, Maito has paused the game. Huh? Yes. And continuing over here, going to be retreating here, and uh, well, Maito does still have his map control, uh, partly due to how his uh, barracks and stable has been built. But what another thing which I find a bit interesting is how that 1,600 wood went into possibly an upgrade or whatever, but none of that wood went into another town center. Though he does have, he is approaching that 500 wood mark, which means he might be putting one down fairly soon. Though it's hard to tell, since this explorer is still in the front line, so maybe that's not going to be the case. And well, a dragoon artillery army here, and 
might have looks like he's going to be trying to take this. Uh, a bit unusual that uh, he was trying to focus down the covering over there. Usually he would want to go for organ guns. And uh, well, all the organ guns are going to be focused down. And there's going to be skirmishers against the goons here. And the goons on these sock pads do have a slightly lower range resist than usual. And so my is actually going to be able to push back the uh, red force over here. And we'll retain his military unit population lead. Though, as you can see, the economic we talked about economic population is he still heavily in favor of the um, uh, it's a bug in the UI here, but still heavily in favor of the um, uh, Portuguese player. And so long as Kinesi can hold, I don't really see how Maito can retain that. Um, of course, Dragoons are very strong, especially when paired with uh, upgraded organ guns. But Mitre does have one Colvin, though it is not upgraded, so it is not going to be able to one-shot these, these uh, organ guns just yet. You can see that one-shot did even go astray and hit the barracks instead, and so it's going to be pretty fully upgraded uh, Jeanette Dragoons against Skirmisher Dragoon composition. Or upgraded Skirmishers, so there's only one upgrade on those. Or at least only only the Volti, or however you pronounce it, upgrade on them. The Royal Guard upgrade. Might are going to be pushed back over here. And let's have a look at how the economic um, uh, uh, redistribution has been going for both players. You can see that uh, the Kinesi has been forced to delete all of his um, extra fishing boats, uh, which were on food which did actually put a slight dent in his economic recovery and economic population, but seriously with 129 there, uh, inclusive of factories and such, uh, not going to be very much a big problem for him. My two guys keep cutting back here, trying to kite back here with skirmishers and dragoons. But now we can see this is at the point in the game where both military unit population and recalculate economic population are quite heavily in uh, his favor. Though this is going to be, you know, that was pretty nice. Um, he, he didn't manage to clean up the uh, forward organ guns, perhaps uh, being a bit out of position there with the three covering pop. Still could be anyone's game, but uh, Michael needs to make something happen. You can also have a look at how the uh, military population has been like. I mean, the total population has been like. Nisi pretty much on max, maxed out, whereas Maito only in about uh, only in about uh, 160 maximum this whole game. And these monitors are also going to start uh, slowly eating away at what's over here. Though this is EP, so monitor range has been slightly nerfed, which does mean it probably won't be able to reach that factory. And Kinesi smartly started mixing cast and order, even getting all these advanced arsenal upgrades, and which which uh, usually you would not get until much later in the game. But given how Kinesi's economy has been booming so much, uh, well, it's highly upgraded units coming out from the Portuguese there right now against um, semi-upgraded units from the uh, France player, and. Um, even you can see some villagers being forced to gather all the way out here. You can even see some hero and mantlets coming out. Perhaps just tank a bit. You can see they've got a 0.4 range resist, which isn't too shabby. But two heavy two heavy cannons coming in. Uh, going to be a shipment of two heavy cannons. And ooh, pretty nice. You can also see how guard Cassandors just die quite easily to that. Uh, being a uh, Kind of gla a glass cannon unit, high attack and low HP. Yeah. Very nice volleys here. So might was somehow being able to um, regain the uh, military unit population lead here. But this is probably only going to be a temporary respite because you can see how there's a lot of military unit production facilities over here. And PC has even got um, the faster unit training upgrades, such as uh, standing army. Well, might doesn't have that just yet. So reinforcements are still going to be coming in quite a bit faster for the red player, uh, most likely. And villagers being raided over here. But uh, can you see? Well, here comes a hustle switch. Um, 
I might be able to do things, but well, apparently uh, Mido is going to be throwing the tower here, and that does bring the series to a 1-1. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so in, in the end, um, uncontested water is still quite a big threat, and yes. uh, I think Mito might have wasted a bit of time just trying to seize down uh, this UN settlement instead of uh, trying to push ASAP and do some damage but a bit, a bit difficult to come in and how the builds uh, worked out here uh, both fairly um, fairly original I'd say but in the end you just look at this uh, economic disparity a villager population just going all the way here and Maito of course being only being on one town center and having to uh, idle his town center uh, due to all, all the age ups, whereas Kinesi having all those town centers meant he didn't really have to idle his town centers just as much as Teal did. This was a pretty big factor, you could say. So Mido did have this uh, small chance over here, small window of opportunity right after he aged up, whereas 45 units against uh, none. Let's have a quick look at the other uh, the other stats, and we will leave the game. So GG and one one it is. This is a best of five. Some pretender over there. I'm going to. Um, I'll just get a glass of water for a moment because my throat is a bit punched. Um, there will be slightly a bit of slight noise because that always happens when I turn off my microphone. I'll uh, be right back. Oh, I'm back. I'm just going to switch away from uh, red over here, just in case I'm denying um, player two his favorite color. And both players might be tapping out at the moment. Um, Kinesi has chosen Aztec. Uh, Maito has yet to choose his civilization. It is currently a one of one in a best of, well, one one in the best of five series between Maito and Kinesi for this. Uh, let me tap out and read that again. Isak Grand Tour Season One Playoffs Round of Eight.
And uh, well, uh, interesting choice here is going to be um, <laughs> NDF Mighty against Kinesi, as uh, Kinesi is the choice of Aztec. Now, well, quite an interesting choice, I'd have to say. But uh, Mighty does seem fairly confident in this is a matchup, which is uh, which India can win. We we'll have to see how it plays out. I don't necessarily know how Kinesi actually plays Aztecs either, so it's going to be a bit of a uh, 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 on the go kind of cost for me. Um, but yeah, Maito against Kinesi, uh, India against Aztec on uh, Grand Basin, I believe, is the map. Now, looking at the hunts, well. Fairly standard for this map, I'd say. We'll, we'll roll with that. It's fine. It's traditionally a very low, low, uh, low, low everything map, really. So India is going to be um, on the northern half of the map, just starting to pick up all these treasures. And uh, well, Aztec southern half, standard fire pit coming up, which is likely going to be going into uh, Warrior Priest dancing on it for XP, where and all other villagers go for a. Uh, well, for food, and interesting is this market coming up over here for the blue player. Okay, getting the 75 food over here, and he did not actually convert a treasure guardian here, which is very interesting. Looks like he will have realized his mistake and he's going to convert it right now. But he could have converted that a lot earlier, and perhaps the result even got an, an extra 10 XP by microing his uh, coyote and explorer there. But regardless, he did actually notice in midway and did convert that, so not that big of a loss for him. 40 XP for Mito, and uh, well, some stray sheep for Mito as well, um, which is going to be. Usually, you, you would not pick up that treasure uh, because of how there's other treasures out there, but this is a comparatively uh, weak treasure spawn map, relatively weak treasure spawn map, and uh, this sheep, these two sheep are actually going to count as some sort of XP trickle for uh, the India player because that's just how just how a livestock for the India player works. And well, this is actually a pretty decent treasure, and probably the the best treasure on this on the map at the moment. And uh, but it's a bit dangerous for Kinesi to go straight for at this point in time. He might actually get it up later on. And you can see that he's uh, opted to go for the hunting dogs with that market, which of course well, I mean why else would you get a market other than get for hunting dogs? So yep. You see, uh, perhaps complaining about the lag here. Yeah. I might have to restart his computer again, but uh, it's two minutes into the game now. Uh, possibly a bit too late for all that. So, um, have a quick look at the. Uh, well, first of all, let's note that Maito is doing a 10 10. And. Uh, well, let's leave it at that for now, but 10-10 ten -ten doesn't mean that he'll be aging up probably around 4 minutes in return for sacrificing maybe one or two villagers of that uh, one or two villagers as part of um, the build. I'm not going to be constantly training villagers, instead having to chop for a house as well as a villager batch. Yeah, that's on the 150 coin treasures, so pardon me, this is actually a map which has some pretty decent treasures on it. Um, but they're few and far in between, I'd say. Only one on each side. <coughs> Excuse me. And Buffalo Grill just going to be hanging around this medicine man. Uh, not doing much. Maito is actually aging up quite a bit faster than... Uh, well, starting his age up quite a bit faster than our Aztec player over here. And that is also partly due to how Kinesi decided to build the market. Which I don't actually know what treasures he got. It looks like he did actually have to um, gather some resources there just to get it up. I do believe it was a uh, yeah, it was a 400 wood start for uh, for the uh, for the um, India player, whereas a 300 wood start for the um, Aztec player. Right, let's look at what uh, shipment sent now. We'll keep on shipment sent for the time being because that's going to be what's important from here on out. 
Um, Maito did pick up the 150 coin, which is going to be pretty nice for him, especially since he can trade that in the market if, if, if needed to do whatever he wants to do. But one thing to note is that, uh, well, his uh, resources are still uh, fairly under control. Um, this one, of course, being a bit exposed, but it was a bit exposed to begin with. But this is going to be a pretty nice back hunt for him, uh, should Blue decide to rush or anything. We do see two forward villagers coming over here, and he is chopping, may slowly making his way up to that uh, 250 wood amount. Uh, poor Coyote over there dying. And we are going to see a war hut over here. Uh, which is still in a fairly far off location, I'd say. I'm uh, not going to be too aggressive, perhaps. Um, you can see Kimisi being uh, relatively slower to start harding his uh, hunts towards his town center than the Indian player, but that's also likely due to how um, well due to how in this uh, in this matchup. Most most of the time it's going to be the um, uh, Aztec player doing all the pressure, so you don't have to be as concerned about all this. But anyway, 700 wood coming in for Kinesi, where 600 wood coming in for Maito, as well as his first uh, batch being uh, for Gurkha, just to ward off any uh, early pressure. And we'll see what's in queue here. Uh, one Gurkha in queue. And 600 wood is also being used to build a training post, one thing to note there. But Gurkha in queue uh, versus uh, these uh, Coyote runners in queue for Kinesi. And there might also be a um, military unit shipment of 10 Mace Halt in on the way as well. Um, here it is, 10 Mace on the way, and as well as 5, uh, five Coyote. There's gonna, just going to be 4 Coyote runners popping out over here. Uh, did slightly miss Mecca over there. But, uh, yeah. So, going to be moving forward towards this uh, food, uh, well, dead bighorn, dead uh, bighorn sheep over here. Of course, the villager has been safely moved back by the teal player. And can you see just scouting over here with his cougar, just trying to see what's around there. And here comes perhaps the first engage. That villager looks like it might. Uh, oh, yeah, it's going to be saved. Um, that villager, perhaps can you see you noticed it a bit sooner. Uh, likely we would have been able to kill that because of how it passed around there. But anyway, can you see committing quite hard over here? But in the end, it's going to get pushed back by the Aga Fire, the Minutemen, and uh, all the Gurkha. These irregulars probably did not need to be called though. Uh, I think he might have most likely could have held with uh, just the first batch. But regardless of that, he did. He did. Uh, he did call them, and it's not as if that's entirely such a big loss because they do still contribute a bit of DPS as the game goes on, though the range is a bit small. Um, might be going for a 300 export next and the Ottoman consulate, which is going to be able to give him either three Hussars or um, villagers, and also he gives him the option to call Minutemen if needed. It looks like it's going to be for the villagers, which means that, well, he's probably feeling fairly confident. You can also see that he might be uh, aiming to get the Imperial Bureaucracy up, perhaps? Uh, no, no, nothing just yet. Let's have a look at all that. Okay, so it is going to be Imperial Bureaucracy, which is the next tier uh, upgrade at the market. Uh, personal Hunters, so getting most of the upgrades, nice upgrades at the market, is our Indian player. And military unit population is quite heavily in favour of the um, Aztec player, but that's to be expected this matchup because well, the units are quite a lot cheaper and they do have this nice early spike in terms of unit shipments. And, uh, well... India still quite safe for now. Um, looks like it, Aztec is just going to be slowly moving his way around the map, uh, massing as while well, he picks up all these uh, treasures which have been uh, left. Um, might be even getting the flume and dishing upgrades, which is the second tier coin upgrade from this market. Can you see a bit pop capped over here? Let's see if he's building a house here. Yep, he's going to be building a house. Uh, not much to say here. Um, it's a uh, pretty nice um, resource control for Mito so far this game, though. Everything's safely uh, covered. Nothing to expose just yet. And can you see just uh, posturing over here? And foreign log, even foreign logging coming in for our uh, 
uh, Indian player going to increase that uh, unit population gap. But at the same time, five villagers coming in for uh, the Aztec player. So, yeah, well, that even things out a bit. Though it is still going to be slightly in favor of the Indian player for now. And here comes a bit of engage him. Perhaps, I don't know, can you see hiding all these Coyote runners? And, well, maybe he's luring the Aztec, luring all these Gurkha out. I might have playing a bit safe there, uh, not going to go out too far, and that's probably the right decision given how all these Koyuni runners are just standing slightly out of vision. Potentially within vision of the Agra Fort, actually. Um, yeah, I think they were actually in the vision of the Agra Fort. You can see how the um, Ottoman consulate grants all that line of sight. You can see the line of sight actually reached until here, which means that any Koyuni runners which were potentially poking out over here would have been seen. So Maito was likely fully aware of what was there. Looks like five humans are going to be coming in just to try to siege Silent Training Post Fast. It looks like it's going to be just a Gurkha and Zambarak combination coming in from um, Maito, our Indian player. Um, 600 coin going to be next, and I do believe that will likely go into, um, well, just more units really. Uh, it does not seem to be aiming to go for an age up just yet. And, uh, Zamrak's kind of moving in a bit too far there, but not going to lose any one of them, so still okay for him. Uh, these sentries are going to go down. Let's view if Coyote Combat has come in, and I think it might be go time for Genesis soon, but not just yet apparently. He might have moved slowly, um, just uh, well, running back. And I'm going to see what's in queue over here. It's still going to be Zambrak, so no Soar switch or anything just yet. So Zambrak and just having these three Gardener Hussars, perhaps a snare a bit. And Kanishi looks like he might be trying to push in quite soon. And Maito does not have enough export to call Minutemen, which is one thing to note. You do need 200 export for that. So what he's going to be fighting with is what he's got right now, because he does not have any of those emergency uh, provisions just yet. But can he actually... Or maybe, it, well it looks like Kinesi is just going to be um, repositioning re his army right now, but as you can see that might slightly be in Maito's line of sight here. Um, barely, rather. Barely in Maito's line of sight. He's going to be moving his army back a bit, and neither player really committing um, to anything at the moment. Although Maito is just uh, still in his base, still has uh, a bit of food left, and no real need to push up just yet. And, uh, well, here comes perhaps one of one fight, no, nope, can you see just trying to push in but not really being able to, um, and actually building his mass a bit over here. So, so far none of Kinesi's pushes have been successful, and you can actually see how, um, that means that the, the momentum is slowly building in Maito's favor because, well, first of all, these are actually quite expensive units compared to what Aztec can do and uh, he's got more military unit population, he's got more uh, economic unit population after all the recalculation and he might even be switching to the British consulate right now and make, getting ready to actually make that push I do expect that to be happening fully and he's even got the Zambrek uh, camel attack upgrade or the shipment you know, look at the shipment sent, he sent that right out of 600, 600 coin so looks like there's going to be the fight here and uh, well why there's a fight, and not all of the Aztec units uh, working just yet, and all these Zambrak is doing quite a lot of damage to all the Coyotes here. <laughs> um, Miss Halton perhaps trying their best to do as much damage as they can, but military unit population quite heavily in favor of the Indian player, swinging quite heavily in favor of the Indian player, and even the elephant uh, in the back here, of course, going to get uh, piped to death over here, but uh, did actually manage to. Um, distract the pumas for a while there, but looks like this uh, age two skirmisher dragoon combo going to be working out quite well for the Indian player, and um, he's going to go get pushed back for a s short while here, um, but not not for long. Everything coming back in just again. And you can also see how that was that well, oh, nice nine sore bats coming out as well, but. Uh, that was also the moment that Maito also needed to push, so his resources lasting just long enough 
for him to make that big tying push and then move out his villagers into spots where they could be gathering and that's going to be GG. Um, in the end, uh, Maito managing to hold on just long enough, uh, playing the passive economic game, um, staying in his base, just defending just, just well enough. Uh, and uh, eventually the higher eco and stronger units uh, won him the game there. Um, I've been focusing quite a lot on what's been having the northern half of the map, so let's have a look, quick look at what's uh, been going on with all these villagers in all these different locations. What? One short look at the uh, graphs first, and we'll move on to the next game. I'm not sure if someone will be taking over from me, but uh, most likely they will. So, quick look at the graphs first. Another chain of population. See, well, Kinesi did have this kind of spike here, but he wasn't actually using it to um, push in or anything. This is kind of where all the crates and uh, economic shipments are coming in for my toe. Excuse me. And, uh, yeah, this is the villager population, but we do also have to remember that uh, India does get all those wood trickles. And the end, uh, just by units and very composition composition in the middle middle half uh, middle part of the game. Um, well, rather after ten minutes, won this for India. Okay. And um, I'm just gonna have to double check if someone yes ESO might be down. Is someone taking over now? Question mark. Um, let me just double check what time I'm supposed to continue doing this for. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it should be here until around now. I'm not sure if they've arranged a uh, caster just yet. So I might be sticking around for the next game. This is a best of five, and my two is currently two up, so potentially um, could be the end of the series. But uh, hard to tell just yet, because, well, best of five. Sorry, my throat's giving out a bit here. I have not uh, gotten any message about any release, any, um, any relief just yet. And... Uh, This might be a relatively uh, long <laughs> game given how it is a water map. Uh, it's hard, hard to see just yet. We'll do a bit of commentary on uh, what the uh, civilization picks are. It looks like it's going to be Ottoman for Kinesi. Oh, he hasn't actually ch ch uh, ch uh, chosen his uh, civil uh, yet. So it's uh, getting a bit late here and uh, my, my uh, brain's not functioning as well. But uh, yes, <laughs> Maito does pick first. And uh, yeah. Um, likely thinking very hard, as uh, as hard as he can think.
I'll do one more game then. Um, looks like uh, my relief is busy, going to be delayed for a slightly longer uh, period of time than expected. So I will be going on to cast this next game in this best of five. And so it will be China, pick for Maito, and can you see having a good hard think? Ideally, you might actually want to play Aztec here because, well, traditionally that's been a heavily favored uh, matchup for Aztec, but now Aztec has been used up, so can you see no longer has an option. And what does he have left? He's already used ports, he's already used Brits, and he's already used Aztecs. So his, I'd say one of his powerhouse, sorry, powerhouse sieves, uh, Brits and um, ports have been used up. But it looks like he's going to be going for Ottoman. And uh, potentially could turn out to be some water play. Potentially. But we will be. Uh, I don't want to change my, my, my color just in case I'm denying him. And. Uh, TI. And it's going to be uh, China against Ottoman on ESOC Florida. And I think water play is going to be a rather interesting issue here. Um, I don't necessarily know if Maito is familiar with how to play uh, China on water, on water maps, but he might uh, opt for a more land-oriented build. China does have, instead, of course, have those uh, interesting exploding uh, warships, which I do like quite a lot. And I do hope to see in this game. But yeah, that's up to the players to decide. As you can see from the scoreboard, welcome everyone. This is a best of five between Maitu and Kinesi for this uh, ESOC tournament thing, which I for already for forgotten the name of. But uh, rest assured, it's some important event. And uh, here you go. It's going to be a full wood start for Kinesi. And. No, I'm just going to see. Yep, it's, going to, it's most likely going to be a trading post. I could have a quick look at the hunts. Yeah, it seems okay. And all villagers are going to be going on food. And it's going to go into a house, a trading post, and potentially saving that last 100 wood for something else. Could be a mosque. Most likely will be a mosque. Of course, on EP, those do cost 100 wood. Yep. So that does give uh, a bit of an XP boost as well. Uh, interesting how the uh, explorer moved up for a while and then moved back down. But, uh, well, let's have a look at where the Travois is actually at the moment. You wouldn't have the able to get it in time anyway, just to, due to how the map spawned. So it was okay, probably okay for him to just move up north and come back down later on. Uh, Maito does have his extra disciple as China, going to be using that to pick up some sheep. This is a livestock map. And China being China does have the um, option to toss those onto villages. The villages being the equivalent of a house for China, as well as a livestock pen. Um, and Maito going to be getting the first XP pass of the game. Kinesi looks like uh, he did get... Uh, how did that happen? Right, so he did actually mine some some coin and, and chop some wood for the uh, hunting dogs up at the market. Was not paying too much attention there, but that did happen. And Maito just going to be going for a trading post first, and then a village. And, well, shipment sent uh, should be coming in relatively soon. Probably sooner, slightly sooner for the um, Ottoman player. And these uh, war die is going to be quite effective for uh, Kinesi in picking up this 105, 105 coin treasure. And Teal, our Chinese player, can't actually go in because of how these uh, war dogs are relatively strong. And it's probably not worth the risk. He, he, judge, he, judge, he probably judged that to not be worth the risk. Kinesi going for a uh, schooners first. Which is actually quite a... Well, it's a pretty strong card on EP right now at the moment, I'd say. Um, Schooners currently uh, reduces the fishing boat uh, wood cost from 
70 wood to 50 wood as well as uh, reduce the uh, training time by 40 percent and can you see um, picking up the higher food treasure now let's have a quick look at the decks while there's all this uh, treasure fighting going on looks like uh, Maito is going to be trying to go for this treasure I'm not actually sure if he can get it he's going to lose quite a bit of HP we'll keep the camera focused on this um, let's have a look, quick look at the decks can you see a very uh, water oriented deck uh, well, not very, but semi water oriented. He's only got the first uh, age one upgrade there. It looks like Maito will barely be able to get this treasure, I'd say. Of course, if the Disciple is there, it would have been able to get it much easier, but Disciple has been off uh, busy um, scouting for any docks. I can see that the dock is actually going to come up in the middle of the map over here, most likely. Quick look at Maito's deck now. Nothing at all oriented towards water so that could be an issue later on in the game but uh, he is uh, just keeping on scouting the um, the edge of the map looks like Milo's plan here is basically just to ignore water and somehow win, win fast enough on land so that the water boom does not um, uh, come to fruition or, or at the very least is, is not as successful as it I mean, could otherwise be. Uh, first stock coming up for Kinesi relatively late, I'd say, at uh, 4 minutes. But regardless, it is going to come up, and he is most likely going to have his first fishing boat in queue right now. Here comes first fishing boat. And it looks like the second dock is going to be um, coming up uh, on teal side. And this is something you note with um, more experienced water players. For example, um, Kinesi, of course, being one, but of course, Boning being another one, where they prefer to build their docks on the other side of the map. And that kind of gives them. That kind of uh, means that once they take water, it's uh, quite difficult for the other player to take it back because they're going to have full line of sight of what happens along the coast. And if any uh, warships come out. Uh, I mean, I mean, if anything tries to seize down the dock, then just two warships and possibly a third train from the dock will basically shut anything down there. So it's uh, going to be pretty difficult for Mike to take water, I'd say. Um, well, let's have a quick look at uh, what Mike is doing here. It looks like it might be uh, kind of age two oriented. Hard to tell. Um, but uh, it might still be an FF. Hunting Eagles coming in. Most likely what he's doing right now is just putting everything on coin until all the um, food up, food up, uh, upgrades come in just for a bit more e uh, efficiency. He's going to be the food age up. Of course with the Summer Palace there's, there's no nothing else it could be. That, uh, standard uh, wall coming up for Kinesi over here. And it's going to be a two dock boom. Um, where with uh, against a uh, what seems to be a kind of build where most likely Maito is not going to uh, ship 700 coin and is instead going to ship someone something else and instead gather the food and coin needed to age up. And we'll see how that works out. He did get a second trading post in uh, transition, so potentially. Uh, just going for a strong timing in age 3 and hopefully break uh, Kinesi's base using that. That might be the plan here. Kinesi is, well, he has mic uh, macroed uh, fairly uh, decently over here, and that 700 coin is going to be uh, quite useful in propelling him into the next stage over here once that does get gathered. And you can see he might also slowly, slowly, slowly getting the resource to age up. But Kinesi does look like he's going to be aging up quite a bit faster. Um, yep, so he's going to be aging up now and that's going to be with the Admiral of the Ocean Sea. So not, not go going to be aging up with the fast age up politician. Uh, instead going to prefer to age up with the 400 wood plus one galleon uh, thing. And that does, uh, well I mean and that reinforces his water, water agenda I'd say. You can see that he did send rendering plan, and he is starting to get the gill nets upgrade and other upgrades as well. Have a look that he does have uh, the millet system upgrade gangs on steel traps. Whereas Mito at the moment only has hunting eagles. 
I do believe he could probably have uh, been able to sneak in the second tier food upgrade, uh, food gathering upgrade as well. But anyway, here does come the consulate, and most likely here comes a wonder, which does look as going to be the uh, porcelain tower. I'll check that in a moment here. It is going to be the porcelain tower, which when tossed on wood amounts to about 8 villagers. But honestly, 8 villagers is not going to be enough to counter what is a water economy which is slowly getting, or rather, quick, very, very quickly getting stronger and stronger. Um, can you see just opting for two docks here? And I think that's all he needs actually, given how the current uh, version of Schooners does give uh, a 40% 40, 40 training time decrease. Now, Maito, a uh, bit difficult to tell what he's doing here. He does not. He does not appear to be gathering the um, resources to build a barrack somewhere or anything like that. And his uh, villages have also been fairly um, defensively placed. So it could be another um, age 4 thing going on here. But we've seen how age 4 agendas turn out um, against water booms because, well, this is a 100% uncontested water boom here, and well, it's going it's going to be uncontestable pretty soon, especially how there's an artillery foundry coming up right here, which is well, I mean, I mean, what looking at Mito's deck, he doesn't actually have any anything at all to contest water, but uh, still, no barracks just yet, so I do suspect there's going to be another FI against this. But, uh, honestly, that might be a bit too slow. Um, but, well, perhaps not. We can see that the recovery economic evolution is actually still only slightly in favor of the um, Ottoman player, and part of that is due to the fact that this is a porcelain tower over here, which is on wood, accounting for about eight, eight, uh, eight villages in this thing. And Maito did actually manage to siege down the trading post with his uh, batch of Chukanu and uh, Kiang pikemen. Maito slowly getting in all the other upgrades, which does include Imperial Bureaucracy. It looks like it will be an FI from him. And let's have a look at what decks, what units he has. Alright, so 1000 coin did just come in, by the way. And it will be an FI, and possibly potentially an FI for both players, so let's look at what Kinesi has, and okay, okay, well we'll see, we'll see what happens, but uh, well, uh, I do suspect there's going to be quite a tough battle for Maito, um, what, what will most likely be happening here is that we could see a uh, revolution, or, uh, uh, Imperial Hussar sort of thing, coming into play here, but no, I mean, no stable just yet, and he is training units over here, so it not, might just be a simple age 4 thing. Um, although I do believe quite firmly that a uh, Hassar sort of build will be extremely strong here, especially given how the um, fishing boat economy um, will be able to help sustain Imperial Hussars after um, uh, doing the revolt. But I'm not going to second. Uh, I mean, not going to extrapolate too far here. For the time being, all, what we do see is just a few abyss guns and falconets potentially uh, going in to shoot this villager. R.I.P. And really, overall, a uh, passive game from both from both from both sides. Um, might be reaching the industrial age first. Can you see them be a bit slower here? And we'll see if that Mito can actually um, do enough damage here um, before anything comes in. We'll, we'll just qu keep a, a close uh, eye on uh, how Kinesi's uh, resource line, how Kinesi's resource go. Um, no, no stable actually going up. It's going to be a barracks and a town center. So, oh, unfortunately, well, unfortunately for me, because I would have loved to see a revolution here coming from uh, Kinesi, it's not going to be Imperial House or anything like that. It's just going to be a standard FI. Potentially uh, Great Bombards or something, Janissaries, all that usual stuff. But yeah, quite a lot of fishing boats here, and 
Maito seems quite content to let that go on. I can see a third layer of walls coming in here. And he, this is now Maito's time uh, to try and make them something happen. Uh, but there are really no uh, anti-cav units here. And it, that is, and uh, Abbas guns and looks like it's going to be an engineer, which is going to be uh, two falconets, I believe. So four falconets. And these and these walls did buy him enough time, so those two f four falconets plus these Abbas guns most likely going to be easily be able to ward these off, though these iron flails could do something. It looks like he will be trying to go in, but is that the right decision here? Uh, looks like he might be able to do those iron flails to quite uh, quickly pick off the two falconets here, so perhaps not a, not a complete loss there. And might be able to use the range to get quite a bit of the damage off on that third balcony over there. So, so far this push being relatively successful, 17 Arcus years and um, two flying probes. And uh, you see slowly just uh, getting his factory up over here as well. I'm not going to be building it just yet. Probably going to be building it in the southern half. But Falcon is still doing work here and uh, yeah, scores are still relatively even. Uh, flying crows can take another falconet. And this blue meteor hammer going to come in and finish that falconet off as well. So, um, well, Kaminsky needs to make something happen here. I mean, he's he's reached stage four, but he hasn't actually been able to get any instant uh, benefit out of that. Perhaps choosing a, an extremely um, slow, I mean, really just choosing an extremely slow kind of. Uh, 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 progression after hitting H4. Um, really. And uh, look, things looking to be quite in favor for Maito here, at least on the land side of things. In these January series, he's, Kinesi has been a bit sloppy with his um, uh, unit production uh, facility building. Uh, only one barracks, despite all that eco, all, all that eco behind it. All. But he does seem to be slowly shifting towards the uh, coastline, perhaps intending to win the game in the long term by uh, just staying on water, but if we have a look at uh, what he does actually have for a water economy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, economic units, 32, so how about half his economy is on land and, um, well, This factory is also not that safe, I'd say, uh, given how these flying crows can actually um, pick it off from a distance. <laughs> and look at the range from... They're just, just uh, a testament to how good um, all this China cab is against uh, uh, artillery, being, a being able to kill artillery from such a distance. Uh, Foster is trying to come in here and kill the flying crow, but it looks like that's not going to be too hard. Sorry. Not gonna work. And the reason why I laughed just now is I just had a quick look at what's happening down here. I'm um, 3.5k food and 1k coin floating for Kinesi. And uh, yeah, I think what could save him here, well, I say save, but uh, what w could still work here is the um, revolution thing. Um, but uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, shifting his villages around, but they are going to get scouted once they move past this teal village over here. Plus, there's a town center over there. You can look at how. Um, Currently, all the villages from Maito are spread out um, across the map, across all the resources, and uh, yeah, uh, gonna be popping out many men to deal with those. And Kinesi in a pretty tough uh, situation here. Um, and you can see the recalculated economic unit population as a result of three town centers versus well, currently just one, and um, and a lot of villages going down at the same time. Um, shifting slowly in favor of Mito, and you can even see the military unit population very, very heavily in favor of Mito. Uh, 95 versus 30 here. You see, trying his best to just kind of uh, pick up units while well he can. Uh, Matt should have come in over here though. Not sure who that was for. So, quick little shipment sent. Manchu is going to be for Kamisi actually. And, uh, well, perhaps not being in the right position here. He's going to get picked off quite easily by the Arctic here, though. He does manage to pick up the flying crow with that uh, hustle coming on the back. 
Uh, can you see he might still be able to hold? Um, still more units are coming in, and it's not exactly um, what his his main eco is still is still as safe as it is. Uh, looks like the explorer is going to be trying to sneak into the back and get another town center up over here. All those abyss guns going to be shooting at that, and more flying crows coming in. Uh, it was probably a two flying crow shipment or something, but it uh, did not apparently show up in the UI. But, uh, Abbas Gun's actually doing quite a, quite a good job at uh, killing that flying girl, though they will go down at the same time. But given how, uh, I mean, he's got plenty of coin income on, on water, he can probably um, afford to do so, afford to let those die in exchange for killing off those flying crows, which won't be coming back anytime soon. Hmm. Look at that. Five Fatards going to be coming out, and uh, that's going to be from the British Consulate. So where are they going to pop out? Most likely from here. And what are they going to explode? Well, it could be anyone's guess, but uh, I do assure you that I will be there to see the explosion. Where is it? Where is it? Well, it'll, it'll arrive at some point. For the time being, we'll focus on the, uh, well, things are still, still could be anyone's game, really. Um, but Maito does have the momentum over here. Uh, well, all these IF players are actually going to be catching these off guard. Both players being a bit AFK, but uh, these uh, rallied Meteor Hammer is going to um, pick up a few Abyss guns for running off. This town center is going to be going down. And now Maito's hunting villagers are edging slowly towards the water and, uh, well, Gonna lose a villager there, and yep, that that hunt's gone for him. But he does have still have some hunt in this section of the map, so not not too bad for him. And can you see? Well, establishing his uh, mini base over here on the right side of the map. So while Maito is gonna be able to kill quite a few villagers here, kill the town center. Um, can you see? Still going. Uh, still still holding. Um, guard Abbas guns are there and does have the eco for for extra abyss gun production and did get uh, the wall upgrade so I does still need to make something happen here so credits to Ignisi for um, holding on long enough to get all of this set up in the back here lots of infrastructure now what I actually do want to see is uh, fire ships but um, we'll see if that wish comes true uh, Maito uh, is just uh, continue to make Archibusiers, uh, Changdals, Meteor Hammers, Iron Fails. It's actually combat coming in here as, composed, uh, as opposed to territorial army combat. When are these Pitars going to arrive? I think there might be a bug in the UI or something. It can't be taking that long, can it? Uh, what potentially happened was that um, Either I missed the explosion, which is very sad, or um, or it never got sent. And that's just uh, just a bug. So we'll go switch over to that and uh, switch back over to um, yeah yeah where what's that again? Um, thank you. No text being researched. Uh, something there. And we'll switch over to text completed over here to see how all the tech progression is going. And um, well, can you see getting all those uh, wood um, upgrades for the factory? So if he did first get the uh, the faster wood gathering on factories, but now it's going to be on coin. And most likely these will be on coin. Um, a bit of an odd decision, I'd say. Uh, most uh, I'd probably be a bit more starving for food at this point in time, given how most of his economy is on is on. Uh, Wales and uh, his last uh, fishing uh, location has just run out. Uh, beautiful um, display of uh, splashing water there. But uh, military unit population has now switched to be in favor of um, the uh, um, the Ottoman player, whereas the recultivated economic unit, economic unit population is actually now in favor of the China player, which is quite interesting. Uh, we can actually see from the score that China is still ahead by 50 score points as well. 
And more and more uh, side small things going on over here. Looks like a villager might be coming over here to actually build this small wall as well. And might do just have all this land control, but Kenishi still does have the water. And I think what's going to be important here is whether whether or not uh, Maito can actually push effectively on both uh, land and water uh, to start um, Genesi's uh, production and resource gathering on both sides. Um, of course these hand mortars, uh, these one population uh, small culverins slash mortars are going to be quite effective in dealing with all these falconets. And, uh, well, the hammer's coming in. And dealing quite a bit of damage past these walls as well. And hot hand mortar is going to be just using them the house there. Interesting to see these two mortars coming in. Of course they can't actually contribute to the battle over here. Contribute to the battle over here. Um, I'm just going to walk forward and get killed perhaps. And well, I'll have a quick look at... Well, I think uh, what Maito needs to do here is actually... Um, first of all he needs to actually uh, do something about his um, transitioning over to other resources. Because um, we do see... well. Slightly mismacked over there, but he may perhaps fixing it. But he did start. I mean, yep, here he goes. Start, he start, He started transitioning over to rice paddies. Um, he is starting to get the um, upgrades for that as well. Double phase time are coming in, which is going to be pretty nice for the um, honored iron fails and the meteor hammers. But one thing to note is that because these own these upgrade. I mean, let's have a quick look at the description over here. Um, so it, up, it increases the HP and increases the armor, but in essence it's actually only going to be a HP upgrade against Abbas Guns, because Abbas Guns deal, um, oh wait, uh, 60 siege damage, right? So siege damage actually bypasses all of those resistances, uh, so there is that. Uh, units being uh, trained, um, sl sl might uh, slowly uh, pushing forward with um, all his uh, infrastructure. Could probably actually get more infrastructure in here as well um, because of how the first town center has been destroyed giving him freedom to do so. All, all these hand monitors uh, doing quite a bit of work. Um, can you see probably running out of... Uh, well I mean he's run out of age uh, 4 shipments to send quite a long time ago. Let's have a quick look at shipments sent. Uh, his last shipment was, was fish market, which of course is going to affect all his uh, economy over here. It looks like he's going to be trying to exploit all these monitors, all these um, monitors rather. Uh, let's see where that uh, goes. You can see a blue three hand monitors going down, but these are cheap, so no, no, not, that, not that big a deal. And uh, well, Maito's slowly taking the uh, trading line. You <laughs> see the small. Uh, Four villagers shooting at a flying crow and expecting to do something there. A valiant attempt by them, but they are going to walk off. And Maito is likely going to be able to start sieging down the factory here. Uh, the special attack of the of the mar of the monitor has been used, so it's going to go down for pretty much free here. And Maito just slowly pushing in into uh, the coastline over here, and you can see that he has already done a pretty good job of transitioning over into um, other things. So both in, into food rather, into food from rice paddies. And anyway, both the both uh, military unit population and recalculated unit population um, in favor of the China player here. Uh, Blue's still trying to hang on with this uh, composition of guard abyss guns and uh, guard janissaries. Be going down as well, and once these artillery foundries are, are down, that's uh, that's going to be um, his main sources of producing units gone. And honestly, he doesn't actually have very much of a bank to train units from. You can already see the disparity here. Maito even has enough to go to age four if he so wishes. Though I think uh, he may, well, he might. He certainly has the freedom to do so at this point in time. We'll see if he actually does that. I'm just gonna. Yep, here comes a wonder, and it's going to be the 20 villager wonder. Um, 
Good here today is 5 with the Temple of Heaven, which of course does give the trans Transcendence ability as well as 20 village and age up. But can you see this called GG, which does mean this is going to be Maito's win here. So Maito does win this best of 5 in the ESOC Grand Tour Season 1 Playoffs Round of 8, which I do believe probably means that he's going to progress to the Round of 4 and face whoever his opponent is going to be. Um, and I think that might be decided later on. Just a few comments from me to Kinesi over there, but uh, let's have a quick look at the graphs. Um, Kinesi did uh, have that initial lead in the uh, villager unit pop villager population there, um, but because of how well Mito's push did over there, and as, as well as the fact that uh, Kinesi's um, infrastructure to start making units wasn't up just yet. Um, he did start losing quite a lot on land and eventually Maito slowly pushed in and eventually got to the coastline and once the coastline was down, once the factory was down here, well that was the end of it. Uh, right, so that's it. And out. I'm not sure what